My name's John Cordy and obviously Miles Davis and Wayne Shorter would have hated that. I'm a guitarist, um, I try to play a bit of jazz, um, I don't think I'm very good at it, but I just wanted to show you how I would approach footprints. Um, I think if you're going to watch this kind of thing, it does sometimes make sense to get a sense of whether the person that you're trying to learn from or you know want to see how they approach something, whether you even like the way they play. If you don't, there's probably not much point in figuring out what their approach even was because, frankly, you probably don't want to sound like that. So if you wanted to sound like what I just did, then you might want to continue watching. If not, then check something else out, I think. So that's Footprints, sort of. Um, and I wanted to approach it kind of as I do with a lot of my jazz playing, which is like more of a ballad kind of style and very much trying to play inside whatever the chords are that's what I'm working on being kind of connected to the harmony more than anything so that um, maybe one day I'll be one of these kind of outside players but for now I want to really get inside the chords and play stuff that I think sounds kind of pretty-ish that's really kind of my approach to this stuff if we go through the tune it's basically a 12 bar blues to the 4, the F minor. And then this is the part which is open to all kinds of interpretation. Um, people have written it in all kinds of different ways and probably not many people necessarily agree on what the actual thing is but here's my interpretation. So you've got this turn around here, so it's four chords um, that can be interpreted a whole bunch of different ways, are written a whole bunch of different ways, 
but it's basically what in the tune where this normally occurs you'd have like a chord five and then maybe a chord four um, so that's kind of one of the ways that you could think about this so over those those chords, whatever they are, uh, so some people kind of think about them as like an F sharp half diminished, then maybe an F7, or a B altered, and then the next part people seem to disagree on, but I think the important parts of it are that there's an E in the bass and a sharp 11, and then the last chord is like an A altered. I think a lot of people agree on that. And then a C minor. So, one way to approach it is to just play kind of outside over it and just think of melodies that kind of feel and sound good. Um, one of the things that Wayne Shorter did over it was sort of imply E minor or B minor over the, the first two chords. And then C minor over the last two. So sort of a bluesy approach. Um, Miles Davis did some of that. Um, on the recording, the piano player uh, does a few different things, a little bit more complicated. Um, and I tried kind of all of those, and I've done a little bit of each of those approaches, and I thought, okay, that sounds roughly like what they were doing. Uh, I'm really transcribed too much. There's a lot of quoting going on. Uh, there's a lot of that that people play in their solos on the original recordings. Um, which I guess uh, works as well. Um, but so the first thing that I did was that I figured out, well, what would I use if I was using the melodic minor for each of these chords? So I kind of figured out that, and this could be completely wrong and you might not agree with this, so that's fine. It's kind of jazz I think anything goes especially over something as kind of dense as this part where Herbie's voicings have got so many kind of voices within them that you could interpret those chords in a whole bunch of different ways uh, so this isn't saying that this is the only way to play over this or the right way at all this is just what my approach was and how I came across this stuff um, so the first chord what have we got we've got this this, what is written down in a lot of places is an F sharp half diminished. I put a C in the bass and then I also added an A flat. Because I think that, I can hear that I think in Herbie's voicing. Which is then what led me to A melodic minor as kind of the home for this chord. Kind of spent a load of time with that as a home so i think over that first chord i think you can comfortably kind of play a melodic minor and have it sound inside then we come to this which i think c melodic minor is then home for that so, and then we have this, whatever Herbie's doing, it's got some of those notes in it, I think. So it's like an E with a sharp 11, which makes me think that it's like the four of whatever home it is, because it's got a sharp 11. So that made me think of trying B melodic minor. Um, that's my thinking there, so, um, and then over the last chord, what I'm thinking is that I want to try and get us back to C minor, so although technically it's an A altered, I think you're kind of free to play whatever you kind of like over it, but what I'm trying to do is resolve back, over, back to C minor, 
So I was using ideas around sort of G altered or A flat melodic minor. Now, as I said, if none of what I played in the intro sounded good to your ears or, or sounded like anything you wanted to play or sounded inside to your ears, then none of this will really apply and, and uh, have any value for you. But that's the way that I was interpreting those chords. So over the first F sharp, half diminished, I was implying A melodic minor. Over the B alt, I'm implying C melodic minor. Over the E sharp 11 thing that's happening, I'm implying B melodic minor. And then over the A, I'm going to play something that sounds like it wants to resolve to C minor, so... That was my first approach that I was kind of happy with, that I thought that does sound kind of inside. So what I did with that was I, I kind of played it half time. to check whether I could actually um, play and sound kind of how I wanted to sound within each of those chords because they pass quite quickly uh, when you're actually playing the tune. So that was one approach that I had. Then I, I discovered Amy Nolte uh, who is a great channel on YouTube if you're kind of like a beginner at jazz like I am and probably even up to more advanced players than I am for sure. Um, I think she really broke it down in a way that it sounded good to me what she was playing so I thought okay, I'm going to watch more of this and delve into it um, but what she ended up talking about was superimposing triads over those changes and what she suggested was the first triad that Amy suggested was an E so over this first chord which sounds very inside to me over this B she suggested a G Again, sounds very inside to me and then over this E she suggested uh, an F sharp which again perfect and then I don't remember what she suggested for the fourth chord but I found that F worked nicely for me and what you'll find is that actually sounds like this That gives your ear something to latch onto because you've got that rise, fall, fall, and I think that makes things sound quite inside. So what I did was figure out um, a few approaches. A couple of things that I've got to practice some more. There's a few things that I need to practice some more, so here's another. So there's a few more little ideas that I had that I've been practicing um, kind of on these bigger, nice wide sounding arpeggios. Um, but that was some of the most pleasing stuff that happened to my ear. Um, so that's what I'm going to practice more of with, with footprints. Um, and hopefully that's what will um, make me feel. So I do play this song live uh, in a quartet setting, I think, or maybe quintet. Um, but I've not necessarily heard anyone playing loads of stuff that I like over that section. It seems like one of those areas that people are a little bit unsure of what to play. And certainly for me, I was, I was generally doing things like um, just sticking around 
uh, G altered or A flat melodic minor so that you've got like a tension and then falling back into the C minor. <laughs> Um, which maybe works okay as well, but I've also got a couple of extra strategies now. So like the the playing through all of the altered kind of homes of the chords. So so that sounds to me kind of like I know what I'm doing over that part, and then also the kind of major arpeggio breakthrough that uh, happened. So those are kind of my approaches to footprints um, for what they're worth. Um, over the, the main stuff, I'm mainly just playing Dorian, which is kind of the, the main approach that I've heard Wayne Shorter and Miles using over those. So you'll basically be treating each tonic as if it's uh, chord two, which is quite a common jazz thing. So you'd be treating that C minor as if it's part of B flat major. And then the F minor. I treat as either it's part of E flat major or part of C melodic minor. Um, C melodic minor is also a perfectly valid thing to play over. Over the main kind of um, groove as well. Um, so those are kind of, that's all of my approaches to this tune in a nutshell. Hopefully that's kind of useful. Uh, I wanted it to be like a, a simpler tune but also something that's got this really uh, kind of challenging section to, to play inside over. Um, so that's why I thought, thought that's why I thought footprints might be a good thing to chat about. Um, in the comments, if you want to leave me other strategies that I have missed that I should have done, things that I'm wrong about, uh, I'd be interested to in know. If you want the backing track to it, I can put it up on Patreon. Um, but so those are my thoughts and how I'm starting to approach footprints in a way that makes me feel a bit happier to improvise over it. As I say, I'm not an expert on any of this kind of a jazz beginner, um, but that's um, how I would approach that. And I'm kind of quite a lot happier with how I'm playing the tune now than I was a week ago. So I guess that's a good thing. If you found this at all helpful or interesting, um, if you could like and subscribe, that'd be cool. Um, I've also added a buy me a coffee thing Maybe if you found anything useful about this video, and only if you want to, but you could make like a one-off coffee thing. I drink quite a bit of coffee, but um, that's an option if you want to, or if you want to become a patron and suggest other tunes that I could do in this kind of fashion, that would be cool too. Um, but I guess the main thing is if you want to like and subscribe, um, check back for more kind of videos like this, that would be cool. So I'll catch you soon, and thanks for watching.